following topics under the SS3 economics. One, we have market structure. Then, we have financial institutions. Three, we have national income. Four, we have international trade. Then, we have economic growth and development. Also, we have petroleum and Nigerian economy. And lastly, we have international organization. Let's go back to the first topic. We talked about market structure. When we talk about market structure, market structure is also known as the number of firms producing identical products in the society, in the market. The number of producers that are producing similar products, goods and services that looks alike in the market. And it determines that the, the, the number of firms that are producing such products is what we are referring to as the market structure. Firms sell different goods, but the goods are not so much uh, different so much that they are so much uh, different from each other, but they look alike. The difference there is just in the, I mean, in the aspect of packaging and the branding, the names and some other things to identify each producer, to identify each firm from the others. That is market structure. A market structure also describes the key traits of the market, including the number of firms in the, pro in the market that produce similar products. And also, it also uh, talks about the ease, how easy, how easy it is for any other firm, a new firm that is just coming into the market to enter into the same market, start producing similar products. That is market structure. Also, we have some other characteristics that are attached to the market, to a, to a particular product, I mean market of a particular product that would distinguish whether it's either perfect market or not perfect market. All these characteristics that describe how the market of a particular product looks like are what we refer to as market structure. The market examination of the business sector of our economy refuse firms operating in different market structure. Market itself is any arrangement that brings together the buyer and the seller in order to have business transaction. It's not necessarily means a particular place. It can even be from far distant from each other. But as long as the buyers and the sellers are in close contact and they can transact the business, it's referred to as market. We have some characteristics that affect the nature of each market and the level of competition in such markets. Those characteristics are what we use to differentiate one market from the other. What are the determinants of the market structure? One, we have freedom of entry and exit. How free, how easy is it for a particular producer or firm to go into a market and to leave. That is the first one, talking about freedom of entry and exit. Two, we have the nature of the product. Is it products that is in the market produced, that they are producing the market, I mean, they are selling the market, are they homogeneous or differentiated? Are they the same or they are, are different from each other? That is another determinant that will determine the type of the market that is in charge, that is being operated. Also, we have the control over supply or output. Do, do we have just one particular person in charge of the production and the supply of such product into the market, or we have so many people in charge of this? That is another determinant. Then we also have the control over price. Who and who are in charge of determining how much to sell a particular product in the market that is another determinant. Also, we have the control to entry. Who can give the permission for another or new uh, producer to come into the market, or anybody can just enter or leave the market at any time at ease. That is another factor. Those are the determinants that, that distinguish or differentiate between one type of market or the other. But now let's look at the types of the market. One, we have perfect competition. Perfect competition is a theoretical market structure that features unlimited contestability and unlimited number of producers and consumers that are a perfect elastic 
the man come. That is, we are in a perfect competition. We have unlimited number of sellers. We have unlimited number of buyers. Therefore, there are there is no limit. There is no uh, demarcation of how much and uh, how many consumers. I mean, consumers and the suppliers, buyers and the, and the sellers to be in such market. They can be as many as possible. Perfect competition is a market structure also where an infinitely large number of sellers and buyers operate freely and sell homogeneous commodity at a uniform price. That is, as many as there are many as many as there are sellers and buyers in the market, their product is somehow homogeneous. It looks alike. They are so look alike, they look alike so much that they are only differentiated with one or two things such as packaging and the branding and the names of the uh, those products just to identify each producer that is in charge and produce one product or the other but the common thing among them is that their price is usually uniform they always regulate the price so i mean the forces of demand and supply always regulate the price so much that the price of one will not be so much different from the other one those are the uh the, the definition to explain the perfect competition, to describe what we mean by perfect competition. But we have some features, some characteristics of perfect competition. One, infinitely large number of buyers and sellers. As mentioned, that we have a large number of buyers and a large number of sellers in the market. Where there is a large number of buyers and a large number of sellers, therefore, no buyer can be able to influence the price of the market, I mean of the goods in the market. No buyer because we have so many and all have their own uh, individual uh, market power at hand. Also, we have, that we have many sellers in the market and those sellers too, they have uh, an insignificant part in the market because no one has the power to dominate the market or to define what and what will happen in the market. Therefore, no single seller has the ability to determine the price, that is, this is how much the commodity will be sold. So who we'll determine the price in such situation? We we'll just explained that the buyers, no buyers can determine the price, no sellers can determine the price. What then determine the price? Who we'll then fix the price? In a perfectly competitive market, it is the forces of the market's demand and supply that determines the price of the commodity. That is the forces of the demand and the supply in the market. Since each firm has set the price that is determined by the market, it becomes the price taker. Therefore, the forces of demand and, de and supply that can also be referred to as market mechanism is what determines the price of the market in such, I mean, in under perfect competition. As the market determines the price, it is therefore referred to as the price taker. The second characteristic is what we refer to as homogeneous products. In a perfect competitive market, firm sells homogeneous products. Homogeneous products are those that are identical in all respects. That is, there is no difference, difference in, in, in the products from one product to the other. The only difference is to identify the, the, the producer of each product Oh, that this particular product is produced by this person. But in terms of the function, the usefulness of those products, they are of the same quality and uh, quantity uh, in size. As the output of one firm is exactly the same as the output of the all other in the market, the product of all firms are perfectly substituted for each other because when one is not available, the other one can easily substitute for it because of the homogeneity in nature of the products. The third characteristic is what we refer to as free entry into the market and free exit from the market. It is very easy under perfect competition to enter into the market and to leave the market without anybody even noticing that someone has just come into the market or someone has just left the market. Barriers can be financial can be technical or government imposed barriers such as license, permits, and patent. But in form of who and who to give the, uh, the order of who to come in, it's somehow 
uh, easy to enter into the market. The implication of this feature of perfect competition is that while in the short run, firms can make easy uh, either supernormal profit or losses, in the long run, all firms in the market earn only normal profit. Another characteristic is what we refer to as perfect knowledge of the market. All the buyers and the sellers in the market under perfect competition, they usually have complete and perfect knowledge about the products and the prices of other sellers. Therefore, they can easily man uh, they can easily determine what and what is really going on in the market. The feature ensures that the market achieves a uniform price level, so much that everybody is aware of what uh, at what price and what rate is one product or the other is being sold. That is, those are the characteristics of a perfect market. Another types of markets that we have is what we refer to as monopoly. 